Hey guys, this is DPE Carol coming at you from the Airstream trailer. Here today we have a tip for instrument applicants, okay? More importantly, instrument soon-to-be pilots in the real instrument uh, IFR operating environment. So your check ride is just the beginning, guys. It's uh, barely licensed to learn in the real IFR world. So you better have your stuff straight for your check ride if you have a prayer of actually making it in the real world out there, okay? So uh, check rides are the minimums, guys. Here's the thing that I see a whole lot of of late. Um, a real problem with uh, lost comms under IFR. So today I see that uh, applicants are not being made to read the regulation, which is 91.185, right here. Okay. Perhaps even they did read it once upon a time, but then uh, most of them clearly did not, and most of them clearly were just taught to memorize an acronym, AVFMEA or Avenue F. All right. Well, it's good that we have that acronym. Um, I was not aware of that acronym when I had to learn this, so uh, it was hard. And my mean CFII just made me memorize the entire regulation. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, when the DP asked me what I should do with laws comms, I could rattle it off. So I passed my check ride, okay? <laughs> now, acronyms are awesome. But you know, the problem with the AVFMEA acronym is that it misses quite a few parts of the regulations. So if you're acronism is not informed by more knowledge than you are are not good enough to actually go fly in IFR conditions or pass your check ride okay so let's talk about this in detail some more um 91185 IFR operations to a radio communications failure it says in general, unless otherwise authorized by ATC, each pilot who has a two-way radio communications failure when operating under IFR shall comply with the rules of this section. Okay, let's just stop right there for a second. It was uh, entertaining in a dark way when uh, <clears throat> two summers ago I heard several IFR uh, instrument rating applicants in a row say, well, if I just, if I had a lost comm situation under IFR, I would simply exercise my PIC emergency authority and do whatever I want to in that situation. Hmm. Well, this is how uh, rumors spread and inaccuracies spread. So somehow in that little community, these rumors had spread <laughs> with unchecked like a disease. Okay. So, <laughs> um, the lost comm scenario under IFR is not considered a true emergency to the extent that you can do whatever you want under your PIC emergency authority because the FA tells us in 91185 exactly how to deal with it and they expect us to deal with it exactly that way, okay? Because what's the heart and soul of it? Why? They need to be able to know, ATC needs to be able to know um, what that pilot is going to do so that they can make sure that aircraft in instrument conditions don't hit each other, okay? Now, um, our entire airspace system relies on the see and avoid concept, and what you may not know is all of us pilots, even when operating under IFR rules, if we're in VMC conditions, uh, we are still required to see and avoid. Um, now, we cannot be certain that pilots who are on an IFR flight plan can see and avoid, and that is why we need a worst case scenario, no radar, lost comms plan, okay? The end of the world is nigh kind of plan of how to anticipate where that airplane is going to be and when. That's the point behind this rule, okay? Um, and so that is why also you cannot just do whatever you want to do under PIC emergency authority, all right? Now, it's different if you are uh, on an IFR flight plan, you're in the clouds, and you have a fire on board, okay, that's hardcore emergency, okay? You have an electrical failure, that's a hardcore emergency. Talk to them, get on the ground as soon as possible, okay? But just last comm scenario, they tell us exactly how to do it and they expect us to, okay? 9185 goes on to say, not only do you have to comply with this, it says um, in VFR conditions, you can continue, shall continue the flight under VFR and land as soon as practicable. Okay. 
Many people who simply memorize the acronyms AVFMEA don't remember that there's an allowance for them to do something different in VFR, okay? Then it goes on into IFR conditions and it goes over one, the route that we are to fly, two, the altitude we are to fly, and three, when we can leave the clearance limit. So when people are simply taught to memorize AVFMEA for the route and altitude, they forget altogether if they ever even knew about the clearance limit and the importance of their ETA, okay? Flight instructors, I never want to hear again when I ask an applicant what the elements of their clearance is, I never want to hear C being referred to as cleared to. All right, that's just ignorance. Flight instructors, make them call it a clearance limit and then tell them why their clearance limit is so important. All right, clearance limit is important in a lot of ways, but you shall not pass beyond that unless you have further clearance, okay? And so uh, that's important if you're short cleared in the air, that's also of utmost importance in this lost comm scenario, right? When you can leave your clearance limit, but people are not putting two and two together because instructors are not putting it together for them or they're not reading enough books, okay? So read books, kids, and that includes you applicants and instructors. And uh, I expect people to know the importance of their ETAs and to know the entire um, spirit of the regulation, not just memorizing AVFMEA, all right? Um, okay, now you know the path. Work hard, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.